could help our democracy. Uh, and and um, but more short term is to try to make sure that we uh, can get some legislation that is really improving our healthcare system. I think I'll just shut up, shut up on this one. But I, I think that the legislation that might reach the president could do some good. I don't think it is by any means a long term solution. I think those of you, you, you who are here who are single payer advocates are on the right track. Uh, the, I'm sure I'm sure. One of the one of the provisions of legislation I hope stays in the bill is one that, that allows uh, uh, states to adopt single payer systems uh, if they do. Playing with my uh, iPhone here because I sent out on Twitter an announcement that if people wanted to ask questions, they could use the hashtag number sign PHHC for the Philadelphia Health Plan. So if you've got Blackberry or some way that you can access Twitter while you're here, you can post that. And that's what I'm trying to get it set up so I can start tracking that coming in. Okay, let's get down. Caucus. Uh, this plan. <laughs> What's your opinion? And who are the beneficiaries? <laughs> Maybe the people or who? If you haven't seen Bill Maher's show last night, I encourage you to try to find it because uh, you, you'll uh, think you'll get a kick out of how he characterizes uh, the Bogus Bill and, 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 uh, and what it really is, which uh, in more polite language, is, as I've said before, it's a real gift to the insurance industry. And I know that uh, you know, from the, the, the last few months as I was working in the industry, I was part of the public policy groups. Um, we were looking to see what kind of legislation would be most beneficial to the industry and what would legislation have to do to, to really protect the profits of these companies and ensure that it had uh, uh, it, it could sustain its, its, its business model and keep shifting the cost of, of uh, cost to consumers. Well, they got more than they could ever dream for when the Bogus Bill came out. Uh, and by the way, there's a group, a single payer group in Montana uh, that's organized. It's called, uh, uh, they call themselves uh, the group that to, to, to buy back Bogus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's time for the rest of us to, to pitch in to that. Because yes. Bogus has got more money from uh, special health care interests than any other member of Congress. Oh my. Uh, so it wasn't a shock. I mean, he's a man. You know, he's, he's done a lot of good work, but uh, it wasn't a shock to me. That the bill that came out uh, of his, well, his own bill. It's not really his committee's bill yet, I don't guess. Um, he was working with the so-called Daniel Six, which he was a part to try to come up with some bipartisan bill, uh, which was ludicrous to begin with. I mean, Americans voted for a Democratic president, and and Congress is now. Uh, firmly controlled by Democrats in both the House and the Senate, people voted in November for change and for uh, the Democrats' solution to health care reform. For him to spend months and months and months trying to craft a, a bipartisan solution or bill with uh, uh, the three members of his committee who are, who are Republicans, two of whom are long, long term, long time friends and allies and loyal supporters of the industry. It was just, I, I, I knew that what would result would be something like this, but I was. Even I was taken aback at just how much it is a gift to the industry. It does everything the industry would like to have. It forces all of us to buy insurance from the insurance industry. Uh, it does not include a public, even a public option. So we, don't, we would, not have, would not have the choice of enrolling in a government run, run plan. So uh, we, have, we will have less choice uh, than the House bills will, would, or and, and the other bill from another Senate committee would provide. Uh, it, uh, it, it would continue to give the